Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of The Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Thank you very much. 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Beautiful looking Tuesday morning. You made it through Monday. And uh, hey, you're, you're the 10th day of June already. Yeah, isn't that something? It is, it is hard to believe. When is the last time you flew a kite? Oh, gosh. It's got to be a few years ago. <laughs> we, we taped a camera. We, we had yeah, a little that tiny. Was the last time. Tiny, <laughs> we taped a little tiny video camera <laughs> to a kite. And we flew a kite. And we, we thought we'd get some cool video, but it was just. Shaky and shaky and shaky. <laughs> yeah, but it was pretty neat, though. We got it up there. And we, it, it flew. Around. It flew, yeah. and it carried that camera around. Yeah. Uh, there's a Father's Day Remembrance um, event happening uh, over at, uh, at Highlands Memorial Park. Uh, they want you to fly a kite to remember somebody you love or yes. rem- remember your dad? Yep. Re- re- remembering your dad, re- mm-hmm. re- remembering your grandfather, remembering somebody you love. A free community event where individuals who have experienced loss come together to fly kites in memory of a loved one. Yeah. I guess it could be any any loved one. I think so. Free kites will be provided for everyone in attendance. Mm-hmm. That's a cool idea. It is. It's, that is an awesome idea. They do that every year. It's so. I amazing. didn't know that. How did how, how I miss this one? Every year? event, yeah. They do the kites every year. Wow, I never knew. Uh, if you want to register for this, you call Beverly Brown. Pretty lady, by the way. She is. Uh, her number is 266-6373, 266-6373. That's Hires Baxley Community Care. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so this is this coming Sunday, Father's Day, 4 p.m., if I can't remember your dad or remember somebody you love, how about that's a cool idea? Yeah, it's it's and it they do this free, every year, huh? Yeah, it's an annual. Well, they they just started it a couple of years ago, so do you know? I, I never have flown any kind of a kite other than the the typical diamond shaped kite. Yeah, I've never flown the box kite that I used to see in the air. Mm-hmm. I've never flown the ones that look like something else. Yeah. Right. Have you ever seen a kite that looked like Superman? I, yeah, I'm, I've seen them on videos, but yeah, not for real. Joe Reichel posted uh, his. He, he was flying a kite, and he posted a was picture he? of a kite was he fly- up in the air. And I, I think it, it was kind of an odd-looking kite. So I don't know if it was diamond or if it was a box kite. But he just posted that a couple of days ago. Huh. Well, any, anyway, so if he you want to want to fly a kite to remember somebody, uh, go to. Uh, I guess call Beverly, and she'll tell you the details. Yeah, but it's all free. So you just show up, maybe. Maybe you don't even have to call. Yeah. Anyway, 4 p.m. this Sunday, uh, fly a kite over at Highland Memorial Park, which is at 1515 Northeast 3rd Street. Yep. About three blocks north, right? Three blocks north of the boulevard. Yep. All right. Uh, A couple other things before I tell you the the 90 people who knew about the Bergdahl deal. Okay. In other words, before we get serious. Uh, The 25th Annual Harvey Awards at Ocala Civic Theater is happening this coming Saturday. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is the award ceremony where the theater um, presents awards to the different participants in the theater, not just the actors, but the designers, the other volunteers. They they are recognized for their excellence, recognized for their work, recognized for their... Volunteerism, is that a word? Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's at, uh, let's see here, let me make sure I have this right. It's at 7, it's at 6 p.m. Saturday, this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. And it says the evening begins with a cocktail hour in the lobby, including hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> a cash bar, which yeah. I've never seen any cash at those things, <laughs> a raffle, and a silent auction of memorabilia from the 2013-2014 season. That's pretty cool. You know, every time Jerry has a raffle at Jerry's Point of Gun? Yeah. And the raffle is for a rifle? Yes. I really think he says both words the same. <laughs> I think so. I think he says we're having a raffle for a raffle. Yeah, exactly. You have to really listen carefully. What? Yeah. <laughs> having a raffle for a raffle. Anyway. Yep. Anyway, they're having a raffle, a uh, silent auction of memorabilia from the 2013-2014 season. And dinner will be uh, catered by the Braised Onion at 7 p.m. So there you go. Yeah, that's Felix. Felix so what is it, $25? The, yeah. Tickets are $25. There you go. Yeah. So $25 you eat, you have a good time, you, you add an award ceremony. It's, mm-hmm. it's called the Harvey Awards in honor of um, 
Harvey Klein. Yep. Uh, a wonderful man in our community who, uh, great philanthropist. Yeah, and he has graced our studio. We've interviewed him before. Who? Harvey. We've, we've oh, Harvey before has. Before he passed away. Yeah. yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's been in here. Years before. ago. That might even be 11 or 12 years ago yeah. already. I but think we still have a picture of him on yeah, the Yeah, we website. do. We have a yeah. photo. Anyway, so the, call 236 2274 if you want to do that or go to the box office. And the only other thing I want to tell you before we get to the. I guess the meat of this segment is the Republican Women Ocala Marion Federated Flag Day celebration is another event you're being invited to. I believe you have to RSVP by today. Yeah, you do. There it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you'd like to go to this, Hank Whittier is the guest speaker. You know Hank. He's the uh, host of Vets Veterans News on Thursday here on WOCA. He's also uh, the head of Veterans Helping Veterans um, where your money really goes where you think it's going. Yeah. To help out he veterans takes who need care a little of our help. Veterans always. Uh, the, the the typical things will be there. The pledge to the flag. The Zalak children will be conducting that. A presentation of the flag by VFW Post forty two oh nine and food refreshments and adults are ten dollars. Children are five dollars. Children four and under are free. The mm-hmm. proceeds benefit the charities of the Republican Women Ocala Marion Federated. Yep. Yeah, you go. And you, but you need to call by today if you want to go and let them know you're showing up. Uh, 347-1723 is the phone number. 347-1723. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. There is one more thing I need to tell you about. Uh, two ribbon cuttings. The economic, uh, well, the Chamber and Economic Partnership wanted us to uh, let you know about these things. There is a, a ribbon cutting this Thursday at the Heart of Florida Health Center at 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. And they are located at 100 Marion Oaks Boulevard. Yep. In Marion Oaks, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so there you go. If, and if you want to go to that, the anniversary of becoming a federally qualified health center. And on Friday, there's a ribbon cutting at the Pinch a Penny Pool Supply location mm-hmm. on East Silver Springs Boulevard. 3855 is the address. 3855 East. Silver Springs Boulevard helps celebrate the official grand opening weekend for Pinch a Penny Pool Supplies with a ribbon cutting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, in a way, I'm glad I don't. I've always thought I'd like to have a pool, uh-huh. but when I hear how much work it is, I'm glad I don't have a pool. Yeah, but you'd have a lot of friends. People would be coming out of the that's pool okay. If you I can go to the river. <laughs> I don't have to worry about cleaning the river. I go to the river and cool down. That's right. That's right. People show up when you have a swimming. Pool. All right. Uh, <laughs> so this is a story that that is in the news that. Um, when we spoke to Congressman Richard Nugent, uh, one of the, one of his issues with the release of Bo Bergdahl was not about the release as much as it was about the fact that the president didn't talk to Congress first. Mm-hmm. That was part of his his big issue. He was really okay with the fact that the that Bergdahl was released. And he had he had some issues with the fact that five Taliban were, were traded. I'm not going to sugarcoat that, but but his big issue was the fact that uh, Congress wasn't wasn't spoken to. Or what, what do you say? Uh, yeah, they weren't made aware. But of here's so here's the story that's kind of putting salt in the wound of those who were worried, who were um, offended by that. Between eighty and ninety administration staffers knew about the trade of five Taliban leaders for U.S. Army Sergeant Bo Bergdahl, even though Congress was kept in the dark. That, according to CNN. And that is what's getting a lot of people upset. That's right. Uh, Members of both parties are unhappy about this. This is not a uh, clearly Republican thing. Uh, During a classified briefing in the entire House of Representatives late yesterday afternoon, I will take also... uh, White House officials said that up to 90 people had prior knowledge of the trade. House Armed Service Committee Chairman Buck McKeon called the news disturbing, partly because of the high number who knew and partly because the White House has been saying it didn't inform Congress until after the swap was made because it feared Bergdahl's life might be in danger (laughs) if there had been a leak. What a weak excuse. McKean, who is a California Republican, told CNN that he wants to get an exact number of those who knew and their names. Mm -hmm. My question to them was, and here's a a quote from him, quote, my question to them was, "If if you don't know who knew, then how could you, if a leak had happened, 
and the sergeant had been killed, how could you go back and find out who leaked? That was McKeon's statement. Yeah. And then he went on to say, it strikes me as unfortunate that they could have 80 to 90 people in the administration aware of what was happening and not be able to trust a single Republican or Democrat in the House or the Senate. And that, that was a uh, statement. I actually, I gave credit to the wrong person. That was from Representative Greg Walden of Oregon, a member of the House of Representatives Republican leadership. He made that statement to reporters after leaving a briefing yesterday. Mm. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel will testify tomorrow before the Armed Force Armed Services Committee. McKeon said additional hearings and briefings are planned as part of the panel's investigation. So obviously this is something that uh, will be talked about. When, when is Congressman Nugent scheduled? A week oh, from Monday. Monday? Oh, this coming Monday? This coming Monday. He'll oh, be okay. On. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me go to the phone and hear what you guys have to say about this one. What do you think? Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for being patient with me. Oh, it's a pleasure, Larry. Um, it does seem like the president didn't follow the law, and it looks like there's going to be some kind of investigation. So I think that's the next logical step. But what struck me is when we first heard about this we said they said that uh the president had to move fast because of his health and that's why they didn't tell anybody in congress and then now they said that the reason they didn't tell anybody in congress is because they were worried about a leak so when someone changes yeah. their story it kind of makes me wonder which story is accurate or is there going to be another story later so let, let's just have the investigation, and it'll all, you know, the dust will settle, and we'll see, you know, what comes of it. Although I don't have high hopes of the investigations, since Hagel used to be a senator, and he's going to be quizzed by his old buddies, you know, from when he was a senator. So, I mean, you know, you know how these things go in Washington, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thank May you. Can I add one quick, yeah. one quick thing, Larry? Sure. Uh, could you just leave me on hold until Thursday so I can talk to Lynn Cheney about the James Madison book? <laughs> Oh yeah, boy, that was embarrassing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm she's. Looking forward to it. What time is she coming? Oh, eleven o five. Yeah. Eleven o five. We yeah. have thought about yeah. you, Pete, when we got the book. Did she leave me on hold until then so I can make sure I get through? <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, we we thought about. That's kind of cool. That's like that's I don't know. That's like I don't know. It's like it's like somebody's. I don't know. It's like yeah. it's, it's cool. It's just very she's cool. She's a rock star. She's a rock star. There you go. Uh, good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air. Uh, good morning. Uh, as far as this uh, Bergdahl uh, incident goes, and uh, with their past tr track record, there's nothing you can trust or believe that comes out of Washington, period, i.e., uh, the so-called Benghazi investigation. Two clearly unanswered questions still remain. And that is, why was our ambassador in Benghazi on the uh, day they most expected some kind of uh, terrorist activity? And the other re thing I want to know is, what happened to all the arms? Was that a big negotiation with the arms that Gaddafi had that was, were captured? Nobody knows who has them except they're all over the place uh, in the hands of the bad guys. Um, you know, these are things that uh, you you can't believe anything that comes out of Washington anymore, regardless of whether it's the administration or uh, the the House or the Senate. And you can see how uh, things are going with the Supreme Court. It's uh, we're going to have to take back our country, guys. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you, Sonny. Uh, uh, since since Sonny brought up uh, Benghazi, there was a. Uh, an interview with Diane Sawyer was it yesterday uh, on ABC News and um, w with Hillary Clinton I'm sorry and Hillary Clinton was mm -hmm. talking to Diane Sawyer and, and she said um, when, when she was asked by Diane Sawyer if she thought that the Benghazi controversy would be an issue for her should she decide to run for the presidency her quote was quote actually it's more of a reason to run because I do not believe our great country should be playing minor league ball. We ought to be in the majors. Yeah, I had seen that. I watched that interview Does that even answer the question? I, no. I, no, she was. Anyway, anyway so I, I don't want to shift to Benghazi. I, uh, uh, all right, let's go back to the phone. And, uh, she, oh, was was wearing, a, she, she was wearing a blue dress, by the way, <laughs> during the interview. <laughs> she was. Good morning. You're on the air. 
I Good saw morning. It. Well, Hillary Clinton also Hillary Clinton also just said that when her and Bill left the White House, they were broke. So that tells you how how, my, how credible she is. But uh, going back to this thing with this Berg doll, it really pissed me off. They showed a video of uh, Obama getting off. I don't know if it was Air Force One or whatever airplane it was, and a Marine was saluting him, and he walked right past the Marine without saluting him. But they're going to sit there and get this dirt bag that got six of his fellow soldiers killed because he deserted it, but you're not going to sit there and salute a Marine that's sitting there giving you the respect to salute you getting off the airplane. So I think this guy just needs to retire, go in a hole somewhere, and sell used cars. Huh. Okay, I didn't hear that story. All right, thank you. appreciate that. Wow. I didn't salute back. Yeah. Uh, a, law, a law passed by Congress last year and signed by President Obama requires a 30-day notice before any prisoners associated with terrorist attacks against the United States are released from the military prison at Guantanamo Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but uh, let's see. Is there a loophole in there? It says Obama had constitutional authority under Article 2 to make the decision he made. Um Anyway, so yeah, but for ni- up to ninety people in his administration to know about it, yeah. and then they didn't even let Congress. Well, that's in. and that's what's the big talk today. Good morning, you're you're on the air. Thank you for waiting. Good morning, Larry. Hey, how you doing, Norm? Hi, Norm. Yeah, I don't know what they do in the military today, but if you miss morning muster, you're in a lot of trouble. You're absent. If you're not on the base, you're absent without leave. It's a summary court martial offense. That's all. Simple as that. If you're a grunt and you walk away, you're in trouble. I, and, uh, everything is so complex anymore. If you're a wall, you're a wall. Yeah, I, but you're, and I think I think pretty much everybody agrees that he should face the a wall charge. Um, well, everybody else has to. Yeah, the guys yeah. are in Leavenworth for stealing somebody's socks. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, really. I, yeah, I don't mean that. No, I, I believe you. I, I just don't think anybody's questioning whether he should face those charges. And and the, the question as to whether he should have been rescued, that's debatable, too. Well, if you leave your post, that's dereliction of duty. Yeah, yeah, and nobody's yeah. really questioning that, I don't think. I mean, everybody seems to think that's probably... I mean, I don't know whether he was on a duty or not. Yeah, he, you know? yeah, he walked away from what it sounds like to me, but... Well, if you walk away from your post, that's a general court-martial. Yeah. I, I, uh, I know my son, when he was a co- commander, he had an AWOL guy, went and got him and brought him back. Yeah. To keep them out of trouble. <laughs> well, and but really but I guess but if somebody goes a wall because they're they're they they have a, an issue with what they're doing, they they don't politically agree with what they're they're doing, and then they get captured and they're held in a prison for five years. It's a little bit different, and not that he shouldn't still face that court martial charge. He should mm-hmm. still face that, but whether we should have rescued him—that's another question. The the the, well, the it, idea of is they let four. John, four John Dillinger out of mobsters back to what we got to shoot better shoot them this time than imprison them because mm. uh, there'll be a lot of tro- uh, consequences yeah I mean you can't let it, see they're letting all these immigrants out of, of prison and then for all kinds of charges. Yeah. I right. got them coming and going. I know, but it's, it's it, bringing that to this conversation, though, muddies the conversation a little bit. But I, I, I do understand what you're saying, and, and the, I do get the significance and the connection between that and this. Anyway, thank yeah. you, Norm. Good to hear from you, as always. Good day. I appreciate your call. Uh, so anyway, so that's the talk today. That's what people are, are talking about. 90 people, well, between 80 and 90, knew of the deal. Congress did not. Both Republicans and Democrats are upset by that. Yeah, they should uh, Especially in light of the fact that we just apparently had a new law last year that said there needs to be a 30-day notice. But then... You know, and, and Congressman Nugent was the only congressman we've spoken to about this, and he, mm-hmm. he said it before anybody else did. He he didn't mention the 80 or 90, maybe he didn't know that, because I think that was just released yesterday. Uh-huh. But he, he did say that the big issue with his fellow congress 
men and women, mm -hmm. was the idea that they were not consulted. Yeah. That they, they weren't included in on this. The, the, the one thing we always forget, because the word president has become synonymous with the word leader. Yeah. Well, the president was called the president by our very wise founding fathers because of the word preside. Yes. Preside over. Not to rule, but to preside over. That's right. The presiding person over the entire government is the president. Mm -hmm. And while he has certain powers, nobody's denying that, he really is supposed to preside over the real government, which is who? You and me. Exactly. Represented by who? Congress. Exactly. So Congress, you know, the, the House of Representatives and the Senate, that's supposed to be us in many form. Yeah. And then he's supposed to preside over that. And together, we're all supposed to decide what we do at any given time. And we, as, as citizens, grant, I, I guess, our will or, or our, you know, that's why we write to our congressmen. That's why we let them know how we feel about certain things so that they can represent it in this ch these chambers up in Washington, D.C. that are supposed to represent you and I, we the people. Yeah, exactly. Of the United States. And then he, as the president, is supposed to preside. They're not supposed to, and, and it's not just Obama. A lot of them have done this. But oh, they kind of take this role as way beyond what George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and, and James Madison yes. <laughs> uh, had envisioned. Exactly. Um, so, All right, uh, let's push forward and uh, make room for what we're doing next. Uh, Get news coming up from Fox, and then we'll be back. Deal? Deal. Get it for less at the DIY Home Center Outlet. Get top quality real wood cabinets the same or less than the big box stores are selling the cheap stuff. And that's not all. Drywall Screws big box stores are $6.47 a pound at DIY only $4.99. Plus DIY has the largest selection of mobile home parts and accessories anywhere. From carpet to doors, get the DIY supplies you need for less.